As far as the election is concerned, we're doing very well. You see we're up in the polls pretty substantially. Uh, they, have, they have a new thing, a new phenomena, and that's uh, gambling polls. They call it the poly poll or something. I've never heard of it. Poly market. Poly market. And uh, we're, uh, I guess, at 64 to 38, 36, something like that. So that's not bad. I don't know what the hell it means, but it means that we're doing pretty well. And we're the 64, by the way, okay? Just, we don't want to be the 38 or 36. The right wing has been over the moon lately as they insist that the betting market is a foolproof indicator of who will win the presidential election in November. And lately, Trump has been shown to be comfortably on his way to the White House, according to Polymarket, a political trading website. One of the, one of the, the markers that I've even talked about on this broadcast has been the betting markets um, over the past couple of weeks. And we've seen those betting markets move towards former President Trump. A lot of people have looked at those markets and said, well, uh, that is an indication of where this election is going because people are putting money on the line. Um, I think there's a big now asterisk on all of this. Uh, there's a market called poly market. It's outside the United States. I should also note it is illegal for Americans to be trading on poly markets. So as a result, you're talking about should be talking about foreign investors <clears throat> unless we're talking about folks who are using what are called VPN services in the U.S. to effectively pretend they're somewhere else to vote there. But one of the things we have uh, found and it's been reported now is that there have been four uh, major trades made on those markets uh, that have come in through cryptocurrency uh, all anonymously mm -hmm. for former President Trump. And so there is a question mark out there about the accuracy, validity of what these markets are doing and how much we should really take away from them. Poly Market was founded by a 26 year old named Shane Copeland, but it's funded by right wing billionaire and Trump fan supporter Peter Thiel. If, if it is going to be close, by the way, if it's if it's like going to be a razor thin close election, then um, then I'm pretty sure Kamala will win because um, because they will cheat. They will fortify it. They will steal the ballots. And so, so, uh, so, you know, if, if, we, if, 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 if we can, if we can, if we can, if we can answer them in the, in, the, in the event, in the event that it's close, I don't want to be involved. In the event that it's not close, I don't need to be involved. And so that's sort of, uh, that's sort of a straightforward this analysis a right answer. there. Uh, I, I am still very strongly pro-Trump, pro, uh, pro-JD. I've decided not to uh, donate any money politically, but uh, I'm supporting them in every other way, uh, every other way possible. Elon Musk is also a fan of the website and he has been promoting it and analyzing its trends regularly on his own website over on X. They look at the betting trends as being indicative of overall political leanings and voting trends in a similar way that people would look to the stock market to assess the general state of business and the economy, politics, etc. So until recently, Kamala Harris was projected to win the election, according to poly market data, but then things shifted quite rapidly and quite significantly in Trump's favor. Right-wing pundits took to social media using this as proof that Trump was winning and that suddenly, for some reason that they really could not explain, people decided that they wanted him to be president. But now if this Siena poll is right and he's up by one nationally and up in every battleground state or within striking distance, and if you look at the Nate Silver stuff, he... Nate Silver now, who it's been like two weeks every day, the probability of Trump winning this election increases. Left-wing election forecaster Nate Silver, they should be nervous. His, we saw that in the New York Times Siena poll. We saw that in Nate Silver in his prediction. I like how Nate Silver does analyze the breadth of the polls and the trend lines in the polls. So and the yeah. Nate Silver projection, the markets take into account the historical undercounting in polls in 2016 and 2020. Right. The polls tonight are close. Donald Trump is holding on to a 60% edge in today's forecast from statistician uh, Nate Silver. Just to point out how nonsensical the shift was, this was all happening at around the same time that Trump had announced his tariff plan, a plan that economists from around the world really had all derided as being ultimately bad for the American people and the American and global economies. Look at what Trump's plan would do. Trump's plan would cut the GDP by 8.9%. Hmm. And let me put that in perspective for you. This is roughly twice the amount that the GDP went down 
during the financial crisis. Wow. So we would be looking at something between a recession and a depression. Anyway, the apparent volatility didn't seem to bother these Trump supporters. They just took it as what it was, but others did look into it. With the help of AI, people were able to determine that large donations totaling over $28 million were coming from one guy with four separate accounts, one guy in France. He can't even vote in this election. When Polymarket contacted the guy, he said he wasn't trying to do anything crazy. He wasn't trying to sway the markets. He just had a ton of money and he chose to bet his money on Trump. So the extreme shift in favorability on poly market has been explained, but other similar markets have also indicated that Trump is now the likely winner in November. Questions as to whether or not these markets influence one another as far as coming up with probability have come up, as well as how reliable they are in actually predicting outcomes. With polling and speculative markets, a lot of times what people believe is what ends up manifesting in reality. It's all very law of attraction-esque, and the people behind these speculation models know that. That's why certain polling outlets have political leanings or they're hired by particular parties. If they can convince people that a particular outcome is already likely, it could potentially encourage or discourage voters accordingly. Climbing over a giant hill is very daunting and overwhelming, but if people see that their candidate is already starting in the lead, they're already starting from the top of the hill, they're more willing to join that winning team and help to widen the margin of promised victory it's like the same reason why fans will cheer on their teams when their team is winning, but they will boo their team if their team is losing. Cheering harder for a losing team, which might actually help to encourage them and guide them toward a win, is very sad and exhausting, and it's a lot more work and it's a lot more fun, so it's hard to convince people to cheer for a losing team. Anyway, is this anything that anyone actually needs to be concerned with? These are people who are betting speculatively because they want to make some money. People like Elon Musk will argue that this is worth more than even exit poll data because there's money backing up these people's beliefs and presumably because they have that money that they're willing to put up, these bettors know more about probable outcomes than the average voter does. But that's the thing with elections. There's always speculation and some of it is well-informed and some of it is not. Regardless, you're going to have people make seemingly strong or at least decent arguments for either candidate and this will absolutely continue all the way up until the polls close and the races are called. And maybe this could be a bigger commentary on you know society's fear of the unknown and the volatility of everyday life like we're all just trying to get ahead of things to ease our mental shocks later or maybe this is more of a commentary on the 24-hour news cycle it's not enough to just report the news that has already happened anymore we also have to guess what news is coming up and with that no one wants to be wrong no one wants to get got no one wants to seem overly eager or overly confident about any one particular outcome only to be proven wrong later and then and at that point, their credibility is shot. I've said who I think will win the presidential election and the senator race here in Texas, but honestly, anything can happen. These races are so upsettingly close that even the slightest shift in sentiment or the dumbest headline, whether it's true or not, could sway the voters who haven't already voted yet. Anything can happen. We just have to stay vigilant in the meantime and good luck in the next two weeks. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you.